Hi, this is Karen Burke from Karen Burke Photography and today I'm going to take you through the steps on how I created this picture um, of the little squirrel with the teddy bear in his arm. Uh, I took the picture today. I have a little viewing area out my bedroom window and he was just feet away. I opened up the window and uh, usually photograph the birds and uh, he just kind of sat there and stared at me so I took some pictures of him and with his arm the way it was it just seemed like he needed something tucked in there so I added the teddy bear so this is going to be what we're going to end up with and we'll start with the original so I'll go back to my history to the original photo and uh, what I'll do first is uh, get rid of this twine. I use this twine to uh, hold the branches up of that tree because I've got a lot of heavy feeders hanging from that bush. And uh, so let's let's start with that. We'll start with the patch tool. And uh, I use small sections because you're going to want to sample areas where it's very close to so just drag it over. And if it's not perfect when we're done, I usually will go in and um, use the clone tool as well and uh, do any extra cleanup with the clone tool. Missed a little bit there. See it didn't didn't match perfectly there but that's where we can go in with the clone tool and fix that up. Okay, so you, you, you see how I've been doing this. I'll go down here by the branch and just show you over here. What you can do is just slide it up a little bit, including the branch, and make sure it lines up. And make sure also, I didn't mention, make sure that your, um, your patch tool is selected with content aware. So if you right click on your patch tool, um, Somewhere it says content aware. Patch tool. Well, I'm not going to go through that now. You can also do the content aware tool. Spot healing brush I'm not totally crazy about, but um, it can get really muddy. So I, I found that I like the patch tool the best. just realized that I'm going to have to finish this because once you start um, making changes in your history uh, you lose I can't go back so I'll just finish this up shows you how well prepared I am for these videos little piece okay see it looks a little little splotchy there um, so once I finish this part up then we'll go and we'll, we'll get the clone tool and clean that up a bit
can't remember if I took that out or not, but I'll take it out. Okay, so then we'll go in with the clone tool and make my brush a little bit bigger. And with the clone tool, um, when you're cleaning up, you don't typically want it at 100% opacity. You want a soft brush, and that looks about, about right size. I've got around 49% there. So you just sample where you want to um, get your color from. You know, Since this is so dark and muddy, I'm going to go to a lighter area and just... Try and clean it up a little bit. Be careful when you're cloning. When you get up to the top here, if you click up here and then you pull it down here, you're going to get a line. So just be careful with that, where you're picking your um, your sites from to clone. Um, I think what I did over here was I took, I'm going to get a larger brush, and I wasn't too crazy with the final edit about um, this little dark area, so I want to get rid of that now. Okay, I'll work with uh, this over here. I'll just kind of line it up until we start hitting the squirrel and then resample. That way we get rid of the, the dark area over in this corner. We've got three dots here. I'm going to take care of that. Let me make my brush just a little bit smaller. I'm using a new um, screen capture. Um, the Adobe Captivate was a little bit out of my budget to buy, so uh, I'm trying, um, I think it's called Camtasia. It's a, I've got a 30-day trial. We'll see how it goes. Um, it looks pretty cut and dry, just like the other, so we'll just see. When I get the final edit, this is my first um, video with the, with this program. Okay, so that the string is out. I'm going to run a um, action just to just to prepare it um, for when I want to add the bear and crop it. Um, I think I used uh, from the carving tree of the Greater Than Gatsby. Um, Photoshop Actions, I did a clean, no I didn't, I did a dramatic, where is it? Clean Edit, Vibrant Edit, Rich Edit, there it is. Okay. What you want to make sure that you do is, because I know that I'm going to, when I add the bear in, um, I'm going to add just a subtle edit um, color base and it's it's going to really, you know, two color bases, it's going to super sharpen. Um, I don't know if you can see, but there's there's banding in here already. When you start adding um, actions, you have to be careful of that. It gets awful noisy. Um, you turn off, what I find works is I turn off the vignette and I turn off the spotlight. You can see the spotlight, it goes away quite a bit. And I like the vignette, so what I'm going to try doing is turning it down and see if that takes care of it. Otherwise, I'll turn it off. Um, just leave a bit of it. I can still see some banding, but what I can do is um, add a, uh, a blur layer and and clean that up. So we're gonna I turn I'm gonna turn off the sharpening layers in here. There's there's a high pass sharpening layer, and then I gotta widen this so we so we can see what it says. There's a dramatic sharpen, so we're going to turn those off because I'm going to do a sharpening layer after I add the bear, and then um, 
he, the, the squirrel will just be way too sharp. So we'll turn that off and flatten because I'm going to crop and then I'm going to start the composite part. I always do this. You gotta click on the corner there so you can drag it, otherwise it'll Okay, and that what I'll do is just clone out that little branch up there so it's not distracting. Get the clone tool, the brush bigger, probably could increase the opacity a bit too because we want to really take that out. Hit the Alt sample and then just brush it out. Okay, now we'll go in and we'll get the bear. Um, I got this, I'll put a link in. I got this little bear from DeviantArt. I'll put a link in for that. Okay, I'm gonna resize him, I'm gonna hit shift, bring him right down. Put him right over. Tilt him just a little bit. Okay, then we're going to add a layer mask. So we're going to be clicked on the bare layer and we're going to hit this little rectangle to add a white layer mask. And we're going to, a lot of times, just to help you see what you're doing, you can um, decrease the opacity of the, of the bear so you can see where you want to erase and then just bring them back up when you're done. I'm going to zoom in. Okay, get a brush. Um, I use um, a hard brush when I'm taking out um, sections. Make sure you click down the layer mask. Um, when you use a soft brush, it has a, a pretty good feathering area around it, and a lot of times you'll take out more than you want to. So, so use a hard brush when you when you're erasing. That's what I prefer to do. Make sure you're at a hundred percent. And just take out where the squirrel's arm is. Once we bring the opacity back up on the bear, you'll be able to see any spots that you missed. Okay. Put a little bit back right there. All right, let's take the opacity back up on the bear. Okay, now we can go in and soften this if we want to um, with a softer brush at a, at a much lower opacity. Yeah, I'll try 16 and see how that goes. Just so you don't have a hard line between the, between the squirrel's arm. I'm just going to turn the bear off and make sure we got, we didn't get the whole paw. So I need to go over here and paint that back, but let's let's feather this first. Okay, then I'll go in, turn back to the, the black so we can go up to 
90% and just go back in here and pick up where I missed. Okay. Just a little bit. Okay. All right. Now we are going, I'm going to just puppet warp him just a little bit because I would think what I did was I scrunched his head down a bit so um, he looked like he was a little squished in his arms. So let me just zoom back just a little. And we're going to be clicked on the bear. We're going to go to Edit, Puppet Warp. And we're going to put a pin in where you don't want him to move because when we move his head, um, we could move more than his head if we don't put the pins in. And let's see, we'll put a pin right here. And then we'll just squish his head down a little bit. See how that moves him. And that gets his, his little head away from the squirrel's chin, so you can see his chin. We'll click OK for that. Now comes um, the time where you want to take and you want to start um, dodging and burning to make it look like he's actually holding the bear and not a cardboard cutout, um, kind of flo free floating. So we'll take it back just a bit. And our light is coming from this direction. So we're going to shadow. You First you start shadowing. You know, it doesn't really matter where you start. I'm going to blow back up again so you, we can see closer. I just wanted to show you where the light source was coming from. OK. We can start on the squirrel. All right, so we're going to get the burn tool, and we're going to burn on his belly. We'll, we'll start out with mid-tones. I've got it at 17%. I'll make my brush a little bit bigger. That looks good. We're going to burn under here so the bear would be darkening his belly, causing a shadow. Going to burn here where his head would shadow on the squirrel's fur. Okay, then we'll go to shadows. And I've did, done quite a bit on the midtone, so just go right in close where the bear's head and the squirrel's arm meet and just make it darker. When you go over the um, over the squirrel and the bear together like half and half because we're on the background all of this is not going to touch the bear. We're going to have to go in and do the bear separately. So let's see we got that. Put a little down here. Go under his chin. I'm going to have to go to the, I'm on the shadows, we'll go to the mid-tones and maybe the highlights. We'll see what, how well this goes. I want to keep his chin, oh, I didn't mean to do click that. I'm going to keep his chin as light as possible, but underneath the chin we want to darken. Okay, we could do a, just a just a hint right here. Got that. Go a little bit here. And All right. Now we'll work on the bear. The bear we're going to First, we have to rasterize him so that we can work on him. You click on the blue part, then you just click rasterize so that he, he can be worked with. Um, first, what you can do is he's kind of bright, so you can go to Image, Adjustments, Brightness, Contrast, and just take the brightness down on him a bit. And that'll save us with some burning, and uh, we can up, 
the contrast on them a bit too. That'll give us a little bit more detail. Um, that'll help us with some of the burning that we have to do here. And uh, he just he just blends a little bit better. Okay. So now we're going to go in and we've got our burn tool selected. We'll go with shadows first. I'm going to take it down. We'll try 12%. And just go anywhere on the bear where you would see a shadow from being held and being the lights coming from here so we're going to have a shadow over here light will hit here shadow over here I'm going to go to the mid-tones. It's turning a bit orange with the burning. Gonna just a little bit here. Okay, just a little on the top of his head where the squirrel's mouth could be shadowing him. On the side of his face. I'm going to go in on the shadows and make my um, I don't think his eyes stand out enough, so I'm going to make my brush really small and bring the exposure the exposure way up so I can really darken his eyes and his nose. Draw. You can even draw a line down for a mouth if you want. Okay, and let's see. Take that back down before we make him a muddy mess. And just go in, we'll make my brush bigger again. highlights just over here. This would be pretty dark. Mid-tones. Shadows. Okay. All right. Now we're going to go with the burn, not the burn, the dodge to brighten up the side of him that the light's hitting. So we'll right click, hit the dodge. That's at 38. We don't want it that high. Put it about 17 again. Bring the size of the brush down. That looks good. And we're just going to brighten the side of his face that the light would be hitting. Brighten the side of his arm, his foot, maybe a little on his belly, who knows, just a little there, over here where the light would be hitting, the side of his face, okay, I can't remember if I took there was a name in here. Now I can't see it. I'll just assume that I took it out. <laughs> the The guy who uh, put the PNG up, he has his little name over here. It looks like I took it out, but I honestly can't see it. So but for just purposes, we'll say it's out. Um, I'm going to flatten. Let me just take it back and take a look at it. Okay. Maybe could go a little bit darker on the squirrel down here. Just burn a little bit more. A little bit bigger brush. Okay. 
Okay. The only thing I'm not crazy about is this line right here. It looks it looks too harsh. I'm going to just feather that a little bit more. Um, I'm going to go to the brush, take it way down, and just just feather it a little bit. No, oh, black. So it doesn't look too harsh of a line. That looks better. Okay. Um, flatten. And I'm just going to run um, a couple more. Um, actually, there's one more thing I did. That little dark spot on the squirrel's face is bothering me. Bring it back in. Use the patch tool. Just get rid of that little piece of dirt. Okay. Now we'll go and we'll run the um, the second color base. Um, just to tie the all, the whole picture together, get the bur the um, the bear and the squirrel on the same page. Um, I was using the carving tree. I've got all the sets, and it's so hard to find <laughs> hard to find where everything is. I know what order they're in. Um, here we go. Um, I used the subtle edit color base um, for my second run through. Okay. Going to take the opacity down. We don't need. We got about 60%. Going to go in and possibly turn off the spotlight. Vignette looks okay. Yeah, I'm going to turn off the spotlight. Okay, and I'm going to turn off one of the sharpings. I'm going to turn off the subtle edit sharpener with the high pass. And um, we'll close that up. And I put a bluish, if I can find it. <laughs> um, let me see, I wrote it down what I did. The dark blue forest to the perimeter. Now we'll see if I can find it. Um, bright lavender burst, dark rust forest, dark blue forest, handy dandy. Okay, what I did was, um, I didn't want it on the whole photo. You could do one of two things. You could change the layer mask to a black one and paint it in, or you could get a large brush and paint out the center so it's like a vignette. Um, I had done where I deleted the layer mask and painted it in. So there's the layer mask is gone. You go to layer, layer mask, hide all, and you've got your black and you can paint it in where you want it. I'll get a good size brush. Good. And we'll put the opacity up about there, about 65 and make sure we're on a white brush and we're just gonna paint a soft I only did it on the upper portion I think I can't remember um, just to make the squirrel stand out darker in the upper corners maybe just a hint down here and down here. And we're done. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I'll try and make make more videos a little bit more frequently. It's been a while since I put one out 
And uh, thank you. If you want to be notified um, of any new videos, if you just subscribe to my channel, I think you'll get an email um, every time I put up a new video. And thank you for watching.